Welcome back boys and girls. In this video, I'm going to be talking about scoped services and async local. Uh, there's a problem that you can encounter with scoped services is when you set up your scoped service, if you create a new scoped service, that setup is gone. So you would effectively have to reset it up or clone the state somehow, etc. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can solve that problem using async local. So I'm going to be explaining async local a little bit and drawing some examples and real scenarios where this can occur. Okay, so don't forget, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. If you would like the source code for this video, as well as all my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. Don't forget to check out the description. Let's go ahead and get started. So I have a relatively empty template here, and uh, I filled out some code, which we're going to go over right now. So I register a bunch of services, scoped GUID service. So a very canonical example for demonstrating scoped services. And then also I have a dummy handler over here. So a delegating handler. And this is to effectively like a pipeline for handling the HTTP request for this HTTP client. Okay. And the service is being registered over here. So you think uh, with this registration, where, for example, I am setting this scoped good and I'm creating this client when I send this request, uh, the scoped good should still be available with the value that I've set in this dummy handler. So that is not the case. I'm going to show how, but uh, when you create the client over here, you effectively get a brand new scope, which is what I'm uh, highlighting over here. Uh, so I already have the debugger running. Let's go ahead and trigger this example just so we can see this uh, happen. We resolve our service, we set the GUID, we have an ID right here, we create a new scope, we have the service, and the ID is no longer set, right? So it's a scoped service, uh, we get a new instance, uh, you know, it, it makes sense, that's what a scoped service is. Now, uh, if uh, a new scope was created, we need to reinitialize this, etc. What if we want to carry this scope over the creation of this scope, right? So, but we still want it to be scoped to the request. We don't want this to be a singleton. You can use async local to achieve this, right? So before we take a look at async local, I'm gonna go to the uh, real example. Actually, let me just quickly put a breakpoint over here. So real example, we'll take a look at the ID over here. So that's F4. And over here is where stuff will be, let's say stuff will be created. Yeah, we're going to execute the request. And if I take a look at the service here, it's going to be empty, right? So somewhere in the middle, we have gone and created a new scope. And that scope has re resolved a new instance of scoped good. Okay, so this is an example where perhaps you would like to use async local to uh, permeate this uh, scoped service. Okay, so just a quick note, if we take a look into create client, and again, if you are not decompiling source code and uh, taking a look at it to see how it works, you are absolutely losing out. So when we are instantiating a new HTTP client, we create a handler. And when we create a handler, we are you we're trying to get this entry and it gets it from this active handlers. So effectively some sort of a cache and we can get or add where under this name, we will either get the entry or we will use this entry factory to create that entry or that instance. Okay. So the entry factory, if we take a look over here is a function, uh, a lazy function. So all of the entries aren't created. Uh, they will be instantiated and resolved as they're needed. Okay. So if we take a look over here, we will take a look at create handler entry under a name. So this is the function that will ultimately execute and using a provider, you will take a look over here, we is going to go ahead and create a new scope and the provider will be overridden with the service provider of this scope. Uh, the scope itself will then get passed down to further classes, which will uh, dispose of it in an appropriate manner. Okay. So uh, showing this, just in case you weren't aware, the HTTP client factory will create a new scope for your services, which are going to be injected within the handlers over here. Okay. For solving this problem, we are going to go ahead and copy our public uh, class uh, scoped good, 
and we're gonna say scope GUID, or rather than scope, let's say async local GUID, okay? So what we have to do over here is we have to create a private static async local, and then we say what it is, right? So we have our identifier, and let's say that it's gonna look like this. Now, the property itself can evaluate uh, to the identifier or effectively set the identifier as well to a value, right? We're not going to be using this. And from the ID, we want to get the value. And on the ID, we want to set the value, right? And make sure we, that we set it to new right over here. Don't forget the semicolon. And yeah, make it read only. So uh, here we have our async local GUID. If we go all the way up and we deregister our scope GUID, for async local GUID, you actually don't want to register it as scoped. What you want to do is you want to register it as singleton. And we're going to supply this over here, okay? I'm going to take the async local GUID. I'm going to replace this GUID over here. I'm going to place uh, this GUID over here over here and inside the service here and here. Okay, so I have gone ahead and placed it in a couple of places and I'm gonna warn you right now, it's gonna work a little bit like magic. So first of all, what we're going to do is let me restart the application. And with the debugger running, I'm just gonna hide the window and we're gonna hit the example first. Okay, so let's go to example, enter. Uh, we're going to take a look at the scoped GUID and uh, the ID that is resolved is empty, okay? So after I set it, uh, it's going to be 3A and that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and skip past this for now. Now with a, a singleton service, the assumption would be that whatever ID we have set in there would actually remain in there. So if we hit the example again, if we take a look at the ID, it is going to be empty again, okay? So we are going to set the GUID again. And now hopefully you get an idea. Every new request uh, means there is going to be a new value in there just because it's async local, uh, irrespective of the actual service being a singleton, okay? So now that we have gone ahead and created a new scope and we are going to resolve a new service from a different scope, uh, the value in there is effectively the same. So 2D5D and the id here is 2d5d okay uh, and the same thing is going to happen for the real example okay so if we look over here uh sorry i didn't mean to open that up it's a little bit awkward to look at but we have ba if we go into the function over here and we take a look at the scoped good service uh, we have ba again okay uh so that is effectively its um, uh, feeling for how it works, uh, let's say. Uh, I'm going to close the window over there and I'm going to draw what is happening. Uh, let's say we have an async function and I'm going to paint it like uh, with red effectively. Okay, so this is the start and uh, this is the end of uh, this function. And then we're going to have another orange function, which is going to be just another asynchronous function that we call with a wait. Let's say maybe this over here. Okay, uh, this is the start and this is the end. Uh, async local, the way that it works is the value that it's going to hold is going to be true for this range over here, okay? If you haven't set the value here, uh, it's going to be the same over here, okay? However, if you go ahead and decide to override the value somewhere over here, it's going to be true for this range. So it's effectively local to the current asynchronous function or to the current asynchronous state machine, if that makes sense. If you have a state machine within a state machine, it's local to that innermost state machine, okay? If you have overridden the value there, okay? So again, to go over this slowly, if we are setting the value here of async local to five, if we go into a new asynchronous scope, it is going to be five there. If we then set it to six and the asynchronous scope uh, finishes, it is still going to be five on the other side. Okay, uh, we can have a demonstration of this. So once we are inside this dummy handler, we can go to the scoped good 
and take the ID and we can set it to a new grid. Okay. Uh, so I want a breakpoint over here and I already have it. Uh, let's uh, apply changes. Let's see if it works. Uh, so I'm setting a grid here. I'm just going to note the first three letters. And then once we reach in here, I'm going to note the first three letters. We're going to come out of the function over here and the value outside shouldn't be changed after we change the value inside here even though it is a singleton service that's just how the async local behaves okay the value is scoped to the local async scope okay so uh, let's come back over here trigger the real function we're going to take a look over here we have a 3 ee okay i'm going to play we have a new value of 303 and then I'm going to play again. We end up at the OK. I'm going to take a look here and it's A3 EE. OK, so because we have gone down into that scope, the value that we were using there was only local to that asynchronous scope. Once we have exited that asynchronous scope, the old value is present again. So that's the behavior of async local. And overall, you can use async local to effectively permeate your state through creation of new scopes. Uh, if you're curious, that is exactly how the HTTP context accessor is implemented. Okay, so services add HTTP context accessor. If we add this, we open this up. We take a look at the HTTP context accessor. Whoop de doo, we have async local in here. And the premise of this is if you have an HTTP request, guess what? If you, no matter how many scopes you're creating, it's still the same HTTP context. It's executed with, within the same HTTP request, right? So it shouldn't change. And hopefully it shouldn't come as a surprise because I've just implemented that as a singleton. Your HTTP context accessor, no matter how much it acts and looks like a scoped service, it is actually a singleton, uh, a singleton service. And what gives it its uh, scoped like uh, properties is actually the async local over here. So uh, this is it for this video. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, again, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Again, if you would like the source code for this video, as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. I will really appreciate it. And a big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You really help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.